The efforts of apologists to find genuinely distinguished modern scientists who are religious have an air of desperation, generating the unmistakably hollow sound of bottoms of barrels being scraped. The only website I could find that claimed to list Nobel Prize-winning scientific Christians came up with six out of a total of several hundred scientific Nobelists. Of these six, it turned out that four were not Nobel Prize winners at all, and at least one, to my certain knowledge, is a non-believer who attends church for purely social reasons. A more systematic study by Benjamin Bight Halami found that among Nobel Prize laureates in the sciences, as well as those in literature, there was a remarkable degree of irreligiosity as compared to the populations they came from. A study in the leading journal Nature by Larson and Whittam in 1998 showed that of those American scientists considered eminent enough by their peers to have been elected to the National Academy of Sciences, equivalent to being a fellow of the Royal Society in Britain, only about 7% believe in a personal God. This overwhelming preponderance of atheists is almost the exact opposite of the profile of the American population at large, of whom more than 90% are believers in some sort of supernatural being. The figure for less eminent scientists, not elected to the National Academy, is intermediate. As with the more distinguished sample, religious believers are in a minority, but a less dramatic minority of about 40%. It is completely as I would expect that American scientists are less religious than the American public generally, and that the most distinguished scientists are the least religious of all. What is remarkable is the polar opposition between the religiosity of the American public at large and the atheism of the intellectual elite. It is faintly amusing that the leading creationist website called Answers in Genesis cites the Larson and Whittam study not in evidence that there might be something wrong with religion, but as a weapon in their internal battle against those rival religious apologists who claim that evolution is compatible with religion. Under the headline, National Academy of Science is Godless to the Core, Answers in Genesis is pleased to quote the concluding paragraph of Larson and Whittam's letter to the editor of Nature. As we compiled our findings, the NAS, National Academy of Sciences, issued a booklet encouraging the teaching of evolution in public schools, an ongoing source of friction between the scientific community and some conservative Christians in the United States. The booklet assures readers, whether God exists or not, is a question about which science is neutral. NAS President Bruce Albert said, There are many very outstanding members of this academy who are very religious people, people who believe in evolution, many of them biologists. Our survey suggests otherwise. Alberts, one feels, embraced NOMA for the reasons I discussed in the Neville Chamberlain School of Evolutionists. Answers in Genesis has a very different agenda. The equivalent of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences in Britain and the Commonwealth, including Canada, Australia, New Zealand, India, Pakistan, Anglophone Africa, etc., is the Royal Society. As this book goes to press, my colleagues, R. Elizabeth Cornwall and Michael Stirrett, are writing up their comparable but more thorough research on the religious opinions of the Fellows of the Royal Society, FRS. The author's conclusions will be published in full later, but they have kindly allowed me to quote preliminary results here. They used a standard technique for scaling opinion, the liquor type seven-point scale. All 1,074 fellows of the Royal Society who possess an email address, the great majority, were polled, and about 23% responded, a good figure for this kind of study. They were offered various propositions, for example, I believe in a personal God that is, one who takes an interest in individuals, hears and answers prayers, is concerned with sin and transgressions, and passes judgment. For each such proposition, they were invited to choose a number from one, strong disagreement, to seven, strong agreement. It is a little hard to compare the results directly with the Larson and Whittam study, because Larson and Whittam offered their academicians only a three-point scale, not a seven-point scale, but the overall trend is the same. The overwhelming majority of FRS, like the overwhelming majority of U.S. academicians, are atheists. Only 3.3% of the fellows agreed strongly with the statement that a personal God exists, 
i.e. chose 7 on the scale, while 78.8% strongly disagreed, i.e. chose 1 on the scale. If you define believers as those who chose 6 or 7, and if you define unbelievers as those who chose 1 or 2, there were a massive 213 unbelievers and a mere 12 believers. Like Larson and Whittam, and as also noted by Bight Halami and Argyle, Cornwall and Sterrett found a small but significant tendency for biological scientists to be even more atheistic than physical scientists. For the details and all the rest of their very interesting conclusions, please refer to their own paper when it is published. Moving on from the elite scientists of the National Academy and the Royal Society, is there any evidence that, in the population at large, atheists are likely to be drawn from among the better educated and more intelligent? Several research studies have been published on the statistical relationship between religiosity and educational level or religiosity and IQ. Michael Shermer in How We Believe, The Search for God in an Age of Science describes a large survey of randomly chosen Americans that he and his colleague Frank Soloway carried out. Among their many interesting results was the discovery that religiosity is indeed negatively correlated with education. More highly educated people are less likely to be religious. Religiosity is also negatively correlated with interest in science and, strongly, with political liberalism. None of this is surprising, nor is the fact that there is a positive correlation between religiosity and parents' religiosity. Sociologists studying British children have found that only about one in twelve break away from their parents' religious beliefs. As you might expect, different researchers measure things in different ways, so it is hard to compare different studies. Meta-analysis is the technique whereby an investigator looks at all the research papers that have been published on a topic and counts up the number of papers that have concluded one thing versus the number that have concluded something else. On the subject of religion and IQ, a meta-analysis was published by Paul Bell in Mensa magazine in 2002. Mensa is the Society of Individuals with a High IQ, and their journal, not surprisingly, includes articles on the one thing that draws them together. Bell concluded... Of 43 studies carried out since 1927 on the relationship between religious belief and one's intelligence and or educational level, all but four found an inverse connection. That is, the higher one's intelligence or education level, the less one is likely to be religious or hold beliefs of any kind. A meta-analysis is almost bound to be less specific than any one of the studies that contributed to it. It would be nice to have more studies along these lines, as well as more studies of the members of elite bodies, such as other national academies, and winners of major prizes and medals, such as the Nobel, the Crawford, the Field, the Kyoto, the Cosmos, and others. Future editions of this book should include such data. A reasonable conclusion from existing studies is that religious apologists might be wise to keep quieter than they habitually do on the subject of admired role models, at least, where scientists are concerned.